Let us all please stand as we take a moment to turn towards one another and welcome each other to this Eucharistic celebration and to wish each other a good morning. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. And our opening hymn for this Mass is Shepherd Me, O God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my want, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, but beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Putting all of our trust and confidence in God, we now entrust ourselves to his mercy, compassion, and love. You give each of us your grace. Kiri elehison. Kiri Ascended to heaven, Christ Elehison. Christ Elehison. You've plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Kiri Elehison. Kiri Elehison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, he ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ, so that we may no longer be infants tossed by waves and swept along by every wind of teaching arising from human trickery. From their cunning, in the interest of deceitful scheming, rather living the truth in love, we should grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ, 
from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, with the proper functioning of each part, brings about the body's growth and builds itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let, Let us, us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let, Let us, us go, go rejoicing, rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had bingled with the blood of their sacrifices. He said to them in reply, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now, I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. Cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, sir, leave it for this year also and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it and it may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many times people ask the question, why do good things, why do bad things happen to good people? I, have, I know a woman I was once talking with who told me very bluntly, there is no way that I can believe God exists because a God would not allow innocence to suffer. 
and then would talk about maybe a, a baby who passes away or other suffering that was there. And, you know, we see that even in the ministry of Jesus, people having that conception and really misconception that, that the actions that we do cause directly always is the cause of suffering or judgment of God. Remember, it was the apostles who once asked Jesus about a man born blind. Okay, Jesus, was it his sin or his parents' sin that caused him to be born blind? We look at our situations here in 2020. What a year we've had. Pandemics, riots, more hurricanes than ever have ever existed coming at, coming at us. In fact, they ran out of names only for the second time in history and have been, had to use Greek letters as they continue to name tropical storms. And so we see that today in today's gospel. As people come to Jesus and say, um, what about these people who were tortured by the governor? So bad that their blood was mixed in blooding of sacrifices. And how about people who were in a tower that collapsed? And so they brought this problem to Jesus. But Jesus, in typical fashion, asked them to look at it much differently than they looked at it. And you and I are called to look at suffering here on this word, earth in a much different way. You see, Jesus didn't focus on why they died, but asked instead the question, why do we live? What, why, does, why are we here? Because after all, as he said, there are, everyone else was just as guilty as the people who died. And maybe recognizing that those that death, there might might be something that instead of being, what is the meaning in that? You and I are called to look at that as a wake up call for us, as our opportunity to repent. We heard in the first reading how grace from God is a free gift from Christ who loves us. In our baptism, we received God's grace and we received that call to recognize the love of God. And it was from that that then we, as the children of God, are called to be priests, prophets, and kings to go out and share the message. As we heard in the first reading, some are called to be apostles and we're called to be the teachers, to go out and share that good news. You see, as we focus just on the tragedy, we fail to recognize from God's perspective that you and I are called to continue to share God's love and to help people recognize that. In that parable we heard, we heard the importance of patience that we don't understand everything. We may not know why something happens, but there's a danger where we sit here and try to draw a direct line from the actions of a group of people to the um, tragedy that they suffer. Rather, we need to draw a direct line to a God who is calling us far beyond what we have here on this earth but a God that's calling us to everlasting life. So as we heard in that first reading, as we come together for this liturgy today, the importance that each one of us have. St. Paul used the example of each ligament in the body, and you and I are called to continue to allow that grace that we received at baptism and continue to receive through every sacrament to touch us and you and I are called to take that grace and share it with others no it's not about how we die but it is very much important about how we live
called to be prophets, teachers, and evangelists, we now present our prayers and petitions to the Father. Our response is, may we correspond to your graces, Lord. May we correspond to your graces, Lord. That our church leaders may inspire us to a more fervent devotion to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. May we correspond to your graces, Lord. That our community may, may bear fruits of prayer and penance and face the judgment seat of God with sincere and humble hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. May we correspond to your graces, Lord. That we may bring, bring warmth to those whose hearts are empty and cold. Let us pray to the Lord. May we correspond to your graces, Lord. That those who suffer may have the strength to reach out for the Lord who is always near. Let us pray to the Lord. May we correspond to your graces, Lord. That the dead may see the face of Jesus and remain in his presence forever. Let us pray to the Lord. May we correspond to your graces, Lord. The intention of this Mass is offered for our whole parish family. We also lift up these intentions that have been submitted to us for Grace Henson and her team of frontliners, for Aya Virginia Vasco, Jovi Kruki, and Jeffrey Kuki. We pray for the health and strength needed for Nestor Ponce and the eternal repose of the soul of Silvana Everett. And in a moment of silence, we offer to the Lord the intentions of our own hearts, as well as those placed in our Ark of Prayer chest. Let us pray to the Lord. May, May we, we correspond, correspond to your graces, Lord. Loving Father, receive the prayers of a penitent people who come before you in humility and faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, plenis unceli et terra, gloria tua, osana in excelsis, benedictus, Qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when, when we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, all the bishops, priests, deacons, religious, 
and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Santiago de Compostela, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, we told his pecata mundi, miser and hobbies. On you stay, we told his pecata mundi, miser and Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon. The Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many. The body of Christ. And joining together with those praying with us online, we now pray our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. And we turn now to Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and all of your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And our closing hymn is, Lord, you give the Great Commission. Lord, you give the Great Commission. Heal the sick and preach the word. Lest the church neglect its mission and the gospel go under. Help us witness to your purpose with renewed integrity, with the Spirit's gifts empower us Thank you for everyone joining us in prayer today. May God bless and keep you this day.